Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we're going to cover how to generate training batches for NLP with PyTorch. What we're going to be doing is creating a function that will generate batches of characters along with the next character in the sequence as the label. And this is going to be slightly different than what we've done in the previous section with recurrent neural networks. Our batches will be based on a sequence of characters shifted over by one step, which means if we were to have a training sequence X of the characters, hello, space, T-H-E-R, then the actual label would be the sequence shifted over by one time step. So then it would start at E-L-L-O space and then complete there. So that's the kind of sequencing we're going to be using. And typically the sequencing works much better than just having Y be just E by itself. Because that way we can make sure when it comes to the actual grammatical structure of the characters that we don't just end up predicting maybe a, the most common vowel every time. We want the network to be able to learn long-term structure, not just in the training features, but also in the label that it's going to be producing. Okay, let's go ahead and see how we can create these training batches with a Python function. Okay, here we are back at the notebook. Recall that we now have been able to read in our text. We have an encoder and decoder. We also know how to encode our entire text, basically get an array of numbers. And then later on, we're gonna be one hot encoding them for our actual batches. Let's go ahead and we saw that we kind of made up a little sample array. I'm going to say, create some example text, which is just NP arrange 10. So if I take a look at example text right now, here I can see the text. What we're, gonna, what we're going to end up doing is essentially reshaping this inside of our generate batches function. So if we wanted to create five batches out of this sort of text, what it would end up looking like is example text reshaped by five comma negative one. So that essentially reshapes it here so that we have now five rows of information. So this is now essentially five little batches of data within one training sequence. So let's go ahead and now create a function to generate these sort of batches for us. So we'll say generate batches and it's gonna be dependent on the encoded text that's passed into it as well as how many samples per batch are wanted. We'll go ahead and default this to 10 and then the sequence length and we'll default that to 50. And these are obviously values you can play around with as well. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a generator. And so the generator is actually going to end up using the yield keyword in order to not save everything into memory, but just generate the batches as they're requested. So we're gonna have X, and let me basically comment this. So X is going to be the encoded text of length, sequence length. And the label is going to be that same encoded text as we just mentioned shifted by one. And the as actual parameters, what they stand for is encoded text is basically the complete encoded text to make batches from. Then we're gonna have this samples per batch, which is the number of samples per batch. And then we have sequence length, which is the length of characters per sequence. So let's go ahead and check this out. So we're gonna say that the character per batch is equal to the samples per batch times the sequence length. So what this represents is the total number of characters being used per batch. So for example, if we're choosing to have two samples per batch and the sequence length was 50, then we'd have two times 50, which would be 100 total characters. So this is just how many characters are there per batch. So you have the number of characters per batch, and then we wanna be able to calculate the number of batches available to make. So we'll say number of batches available is going to be equal to the length of the encoded text. So recall encoded text is the complete encoded text. And then we're going to divide this by the characters per batch. And we're going to round that up using integer. This will allow us to calculate basically if we had 1000 characters inside of our encoded text based off the number of characters per batch, let's say it was 100 characters per batch, then we'd be able to do 1000 divided by 100, which means 10 batches were available to make. 
Okay, so we have the number of batches available. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off the end of the encoded text so that we fit evenly into the batches. So we'll say now the encoded text is equal to the encoded text, so that's all the text being passed in, and we'll go up to the number of batches available times characters per batch. Whoops, make sure that's a multiplication times characters per batch. So again, just the calculations is how many characters per batch, how many batches can we make given the length of the encoded text. So we're essentially answering these questions. And so then cut off the end of the encoded text that won't fit evenly into a batch. So keep in mind, running this line right here will lose us a little bit of information. But hopefully, your text size is large enough and sufficient enough that you're not losing that much information at the very end. OK, so we can see here that uh, kind of the most information we're going to throw out is 50 characters, if we're really off for some reason, or really 49 characters. And if we come back up here, recall that the actual length of all the text was uh, almost 5.5 million. So dropping out the last 49 characters just to make sure things fit evenly wouldn't be that big of a deal. OK, so now we have the characters per batch, the number of batches available. We now have fixed the encoded text to cut off stuff at the end. And now what we're going to do is reshape the text into rows the size of the batch, really similar to what we just did here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll now say our encoded text is equal to the encoded text being reshaped to samples per batch by negative one, essentially the same operation we did up here. And now what we want to do is go through each row in the array. We'll grab the feature characters and then say why is the target shifted over by one. So we'll say for n in range, we'll go from zero all the way to the end of the encoded text. But remember, the encoded text has now been reshaped. So we're going to do it based off the dimension along one off of shape. And we're going to jump in a step size of sequence length. And that will essentially allow us to do the sort of batches we were discussed earlier. So again, our batches are essentially, at the very end of the day, going to look something like this, like 0, 1, 2. And then the y will be 1, 2, 3. And we're going to be able to do this for multiple batches. So then maybe the next one will look something like 1, 2, 3. And then continuing on with y, it will look something like 2, 3, 4. Now, this is assuming all the characters are in the exact perfect order, but uh, this is the main idea behind our actual training batches. So here we have two sequence lengths, as well as their targets that are associated with them. So 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, et cetera. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're jumping by sequence length, colon here. We'll grab the feature characters. So x is going to be the encoded text. Again, recall it's reshaped. So we want to grab everything along that first dimension. And then we'll go from n, and then slice from n all the way to n plus the sequence length. Which means y is just this shifted over by 1. So we're going to fill in y. So we're going to start off with np zeros like x, which essentially means create a zeros array to the same shape as x. And then we're going to have a little bit of a try except code here. The except is for the potential indexing error at the very end. So typically what we're going to be doing, we're going to try to do this. We're going to say y, grabbing all rows, and then everything up to that uh, last column. We'll set that equal to x, colon, and then starting at 1, go all the way. And then we'll essentially reassign the very last item to be equal to the encoded text, going from everything to, and then we'll just say n plus sequence length. 
Now there is potential at the very end that we're going to have an out of range indexing error. So if that's the case, if we're essentially on our very last uh, step of this for loop and we reach the very end of the encoded text, then we'll just do the following. We'll say y colon negative one is equal to x colon one colon. This is the exact same. And then we'll say y here. This is where we're going to do things a little different. We'll say colon comma negative one and we'll set that equal to the encoded text and we'll just set it to that first item there. And then we're going to essentially yield, make sure we spell that right, we'll yield x and y as a tuple. So this is more than anything, it's just a lot of NumPy indexing. So if you're not familiar with NumPy indexing, make sure you review those lectures at the very beginning of the course, as well as some of the resource links we left for you in that NumPy section. But something I want to point out here is essentially what's going on with overall what this code's doing. So we're generating these batches. They're gonna kinda look like this, except they'll be in pairs. This one will just be X, and the next one will be something like Y that looks like this. So we calculate how many characters are there per batch, how many batches can we make, given the length of the encoded text. Then we're gonna cut off the very end of the encoded text that won't fit evenly within the batch. Then we reshape our encoded text, and then we're grabbing a sequence worth of characters as X, and then Y is eventually going to be filled in to be that same sequence, except it's shifted over by one, which is what these two lines of code are doing. Let's actually run this so we can get a better idea of what these actually look like. So I'm going to say my sample text. I'm gonna grab my encoded text. Recall, encoded text is essentially everything. Let's grab 20 of that. So essentially, here's my sample text. Um, notice that mainly right now, it's just a bunch of spaces, except we do have 13 available for us here. So that's gonna be kind of our marker. Then what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna say my batch generator, and I'm going to be asking it to generate batches given my sample text, essentially this little slice of the actual encoded text. And I'm gonna ask for how many samples per batch? Give me two samples per batch with a sequence length of five. So there's my batch generator. Let's go ahead and just grab the very first batch using tuple unpacking. And because this is a generator, I can use the next keyword on it to basically do one step through this. And there it is. Let's take a look at what X looks like. So X, take a look, it starts at 13 and then goes up to a sequence length of five. So 13, 27, 27, 27, 27. That's five right there. And then there's the next five. And since we only ask for two samples per batch, it just gives us these two. Now let's take a look at Y. You'll notice Y is essentially the same thing, except now it's been shifted over by one. It's now the 27s that continue, and then it's pure 27s here. So let's go ahead and show you this with an array where you'd kind of be able to tell what's actually going on. So we just showed you with the real data, but there's a lot of spaces there. So what we're gonna do here is say, if you take a look at sample text right now, the length of it is 20. So let's go ahead and say NPR range to 20. So we have the same length sample text before. We run that and we can see the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 19. We'll ask for the same thing. Rerun these cells. And now let's take a look at these. So we can see here we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 as our x, which means the label is the same thing shifted over by one time step. And then the next batch is going to be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then we have 11, 12, all the way to 15. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what the training sequences look like and then what the correct labels are. So we can see here how we're feeding in the batches. Okay, so that's it for creating the training batches. Again, take the time to review this code, really think about what it's asking for and what it's doing. A lot of it is just NumPy slice notation, which admittedly is probably the hardest part of even this whole project, just getting these training batches to be the correct size. But if you're able to understand fundamentally what X and Y look like and why they look like this, then you should be good to go. And the next step, we'll show you how to create the LSTM model. I'll see you there.